Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students so uh, in the last class we were solving some examples uh, based on uh, level surfaces and uh, directional derivative so in the level surfaces we um, sort of uh, try to cover a few examples where we can calculate the normal tangent plane and uh, things like that so um, I, I did try to show you one or two more uh, one or two examples and the uh, rest of the problems can be solved uh, in, in in the similar fashion so um, you may try to look into uh, some books uh, which i have listed in the references and uh, try to solve some examples we will also try to include some problems in your assignment sheet so that uh, you can be able to practice practice them and uh, we also solved a few examples on uh, directional derivative so today i will solve one more example on directional derivative just to make uh, the concept clear and then we'll move on to our uh, next topic which is basically the application of vector calculus uh, in uh, applied mathematics or in mechanics so um, that would also be an interesting uh, thing to study in this context all right so let's start with our very last example on the directional derivative chapter so find the directional derivative directional derivative for the function phi x y z equals to x y z at the point 2 2 2 in the direction of in the direction of i plus j plus k all right so the solution so first of all we know that uh, when we are given a scalar function f phi x y z or f x y z so the very first thing that we do is to calculate the gradient of phi or gradient of f so the given function is phi x y z then gradient of phi is del phi del x times i del phi del y times j and del phi del phi del z times k uh, we are used to write f so that's why um, sort of accidentally wrote f but it's phi actually hmm? now del phi del x is y z i del phi del y is x z j and del f del z is x y k all right so then the gradient of phi at the point p the gradient of phi at the point p which is 2 2 2 equals to 4 i plus 4 j plus 4 k so i take 4 common and then this will be i plus j plus k all right now the given direction vector the given vector or I also prefer to call it as direction vector because we have to calculate the directional derivative along the direction of this vector okay so the given vector a is a is equals to what do we have we have i plus j plus k so then then our a cap would be vector a divided by mod of a and then this will be i plus j plus k and then square root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square so ultimately 1 by square root of 3 i plus j plus k all right so the required directional derivative so the required directional derivative or we can write it as df at the point p is equals to gradient of phi sorry not df in this case it is d phi excuse me so this is the gradient of phi at the point p 
dot product with a cap. So, what is my gradient of phi at the point P? It is 4 times i plus j plus k dot product with 1 by square root of 3 i plus j plus k and now this will be 4 by square root of 3 and this will be i square. So, 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square basically the dot product and then it will be 3. So, 4 times 3 divided by square root of 3. So, it is ultimately 4 square root of 3. So, that is the required directional derivative of the given scalar function um, phi in this case uh, in the direction of the vector i plus j plus k and uh, we just followed the traditional um, um, how to say the method to calculate the directional derivative and this is how we uh, obtain the uh, directional derivative of the function phi. All right. So, I will stop with the examples on directional derivative because uh, we have uh, we uh, I have tried to cover uh, as many examples as possible and uh, now we move on to our next topic which are basically uh, an application or so, some applications not an application but some applications of vector calculus in mechanics in a way in, in elementary differential geometry and in mechanics. So, we now learn uh, we will now learn the concepts of a tangent, normal, binormal, uh, there is a very nice formula called a serret frenet formula that uh, shows that how you connect uh, in vector calculus the normal, uh, the tangent and the binormal uh, on, uh, of a, of a uh, curve uh, at a certain point p. So, um, we will now move on to those topics and today we will start uh, with um, elementary uh, how do you say differential geometry concepts uh, and then we move to those uh, tangent, tangent, uh, normal and binormal concepts all right. So, basically so we will start with today with this uh, seret, uh, tangent, normal, binormal, serret frenet formula all right. So, this is what we start with today. So, before we start with tangent, normal and binormal, uh, we um, give uh, some basic definitions and um, how to say idea of what do we mean by a parametric representation of a curve, how do we define a curve in a space and uh, then we slowly move on to these topics all right. So, let me go back to my uh, notepad ok. So, now what do we mean by a curve in space? So, a curve in space. So, a curve, a formal definition goes like this. Basically, a curve is an aggregate, is an aggregate of points whose coordinates are functions functions of a single variable so thus the equation thus the equations x equals to xt y equals to y t and z equals to z t represents a curve in space and uh, the variable and the variable t is called a parameter and for each value for each value of t with a certain range. So, t has a certain range certain range let us say a less or equal to t less or equal to b where a and b are both real numbers corresponds 
corresponds for each value of t there corresponds to a definite point p x y z of the curve right. So, for example, uh, if I want to write the how to say let us say this is our curve in two dimensional space here they are talking about three dimensional space I am just for the sake of uh, explanation I am just taking this uh, example. So, let us assume that our curve C is basically this circle. So, how do we write this curve in space uh, using this formula? So, I can write x equals to x t. So, x t would be let us say cos t and y equals to y t and y t would be sin t and uh, I can choose t between 0 to 2 pi all right. So, if I choose t equals to 0, then we have x equals to uh, cos 0 is 0, cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0. So, basically 1 0. Obviously, this 1 0 point lies on this circle. I can choose t equals to um, uh, pi by 2 and then in that case cos pi by 2 is uh, 0, sin pi by 2 is 1, then the point 0 and 1 lies on the circle and so on. So, that means for every value of t, we get a unique point p. So, uh, well not unique, but there exists a uh, for every value of t there corresponds a point p on the curve because uh, for t equals to uh, 2 pi we get the same point actually. So, for t equals to 2 pi um, and t equals to 0 we are getting the same point. Um, so, for every value of t there corresponds a definite point. So, we must have a point on that curve and uh, that point uh, on the curve is obtained for that particular for a certain particular value for a certain value of the uh, parameter t. So, for every t, so t has a range and for every t we will obtain a point on that given curve and uh, that curve is basically called as a curve in space. We can also have a sphere x square plus y square plus z square equals to 1 and then this equation would change. It would be cos t sin t and then uh, cos t. Uh, so, cos t cos t cos t sin t and then again. Um, um, so, um, so, basically we have to use two different variables. So, then in that case it will be cos t and then some other variable and um, 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 so, for, for a sphere it will be cos t sin t and then uh, uh, we will have uh, cos t cos t and then uh, so you basically you got the idea how, how you formulate. So, x t if it is a sphere then we will have cos t sin t and then y t would be uh, cos t cos t and then z t would be just sin t. So, then in that case cos t sin yeah. So, um, that will be one. So, again for a sphere you can give uh, the formula in this fashion. So, um, yeah that is uh, that is one way uh, to define a curve in space if the given curve is uh, actually a sphere and um, uh, the parametric this is also called as the parametric representation is given by if it is a sphere then it will be given in this fashion if it is a circle then it is given in this fashion all right. Now, And uh, if we want to have the circle as a curve in space, uh, let us say in 3D, then we write it as uh, x equals to cos t, y equals to sin t and we put z equals to 0. Now, we have a three dimensional uh, representation. So, this is again a curve in space where z equals to 0. So, uh, these are all tricks basically. So, we have a two dimensional circle and if we want to represent it in a three dimensional sense, then basically the z component is 0. So, you just write z equals to 0 and x equals to cos t y equals to sin t and that is your curve in space whose uh, z component is 0. So, that is the that is how we write this uh, curve in space all right. Now, that uh, we have uh, a curve in space um, we can actually be able to write we can actually be able to write. So, let me put it uh, in, 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 uh, in a nice sentence. So, in the language of uh, in the language of vectors 
of vectors, a curve can be represented can be represented by an equation of type r equals to f t. So, basically the equation of the curve in space can be written as r equals to f t. So, let us take our circle case. So, for example, for that circle case I can write r is equals to f t and f has three components. So, I can write uh, f 1 t i f 2 t j and uh, f 3 t k. So, f 1 t is cos t i f 2 t is sin t j and f 3 t is 0. So, basically we have cos t i plus sin t j. This is actually a function of t and uh, um, that is why we are writing f of t. So, f is a vector function of a scalar variable t. So, you see our circle can also be written as r is equals to f t. So, in the language of vectors actually a curve can be represented by an equation r is equals to f t all right, where uh, r is equals to actually the, um, the, ve uh, the vector o p. So, let me draw a figure. So, if I draw a figure I can be able to write it as so, this is my x axis, this is my y axis, this is origin, this is z and suppose this is our curve um, f all right. So, this is my curve f and uh, suppose this is the point p x y z, this is my point q uh, x plus delta x, y plus delta y and z plus delta z. So, I am going to make them merge and this one is another vector. So, that is our vector o q. O p and then this is our vector p to q all right. Now, this is r and this is r plus delta r r plus delta r all right. Now, uh, now choosing uh, three fixed directions now uh, I am just trying to put it in a nice word. So, choosing uh, choosing three fixed choosing three fixed directions i j and k mutually perpendicular to one another mutually perpendicular that means i is perpendicular to j j, j is perpendicular to k and then k is perpendicular to y so, they are mutually perpendicular to one another uh, and uh, mutually perpendicular we may be able to write we may express express the equation let us say this is our equation star the equation star um, analytically as analytically as uh, r equals to x. So, r is basically this vector which is basically o p and uh, o p p is my x y z. So, x i plus y j plus z k, but since x y z z are all functions of t. So, this is nothing but x t i plus y t j plus z t k right and uh, this is which is equivalent which is equivalent to the three scalar equations given by x equals to x t, y equals to y t and z equals to z t the equation from which we started originally. So, this is the scalar equation for a curve in space. Now, 
for every point on that curve in space we are associating a vector let us say p is p is any arbitrary point on that curve then from origin we are associating a vector o p and that is given as r uh, r is the position vector uh, of a point p on that curve and uh, basically r can be with the help of i j and k r can be written as x i plus y j plus z k but uh, x, y and z are all functions of t. So, we write x t i, y t j and z t k and this is in a way how to say a way to write a curve in terms of uh, vector and uh, that curve is actually a curve in space. So, just using this r is equals to f t where f t has three components x t, y t and z t we are how to say transforming that scalar representation we are we are sort of uh, finding an, an alternative way to write that scalar representation in a vector form. So, basically uh, instead of writing x t x equals to x t y equals to y t and z equals to z t we are just writing r is equals to which is a function of t x t i y t j uh, y t j plus z t k and that represents that vector representation r t equals to that expression is same as the scalar equation. So, that scalar equation and that vector equation both are the same thing it is just that it is an alternative way to write the same curve in space and uh, based on that now we introduce several uh, in concepts. So, like uh, if, if we had a scalar equation x equals to x t y equals to y t and z equals to z t since it is a curve in space we can talk about tangent we can talk about normal. Similarly, for this vector representation the, the way we have did the vector representation that is x t i y t j and z t k we can still be able to talk about tangent normal and some other things as well we will see what are those things. So, it is not uh, completely different it is it is the same thing it is just that the, the way we are expressing it using the vectors is slightly different but it is convenient it is very convenient to write uh, the equation of a curve in space in a vector form then writing it in a uh, scalar form and uh, we will see what are its benefits uh, over the time. And uh, now as I was saying that uh, we can we can actually um, be able to uh, define the tangent and the normal. So, we will start with the definition of the tangent how do we define the tangent for the uh, for the curve in space given by this uh, vector form all right. So, let us start. tangent to a curve at a point P. So, we refer to the same figure and when Q tends to P, so when Q tends to P then this will actually be um, how to say um, along the direction of a tangent to this curve all right. So, the formal definition would be the tangent line p t at a point p at a point p of a curve is the limiting position is the limiting position of the second p q joining p to a neighboring point to a neighboring point q when Q approaches approaches P along the curve. So, this is we know already from our previous topics. So, when it is basically the tangent is nothing but a limiting position. So, that means when Q tends to P this will actually be along the 
uh, along the direction of tangent or this is actually a tangent in a way not along the but it is exactly the tangent. So, when q approaches p then it will not uh, how to say go through this curve it will actually be a tangent. So, it will actually be touching the curve and th that that is that will happen when we are making q going to p. So, it is basically a limiting uh, approach all right or a limiting case. So, that means how do we how do we define the tangent basically in terms of a uh, vector. So, we first so that so how do we define uh, the tangent. So, to define the tangent uh, in terms of vector we take two points p and q which we have already done. So, the points the points p and q are basically x y z and uh, x plus delta x y plus delta y and z plus delta z. So, this one is for the vector r and this one is r plus delta r all right. So, now then our vector r is O p all right and O p is f t. So, that is how we are giving the equation and uh, the point for the point q r plus delta r is the position of the point p uh, at a time t plus delta t. So, at time t it is uh, simply x y z and at time t plus delta t it is now x plus delta x y plus delta y z plus delta z. So, that is the point q and uh, in terms of the function f I can be able to write t plus delta t. So, at the time t plus delta t the, the point has moved along the curve to the point q and it is given as this way all right. So, so our curve our uh, line p to q can be given by o q minus o p and this is nothing but uh, f t plus delta t minus f t all right. And uh, we divide by delta t. So, then this will imply p q by delta t is equals to f dash uh, sorry f of t plus delta t minus f t by delta t right. And now, we take delta t goes to 0 limit delta t goes to 0. So, this is p to q divided by delta t and then this is again limit delta t goes to 0 and uh, this whole expression. So, f of t plus delta t minus f t both are vector and then both divided by delta t all right. So, we will have this thing here. Now, this base this this quantity p to q is nothing but that delta r right. So, p to q is nothing but delta r. So, I can write limit delta t going to 0 delta r by delta t is equals to f of t plus delta t minus f t divided by delta t and then limit delta t goes to 0. So, this is nothing but our dr dt. So, when delta t goes to 0 delta delta uh, delta r by delta t will go to dr dt. So, this is dr dt and uh, this is nothing but the derivative of the vector function f. So, this we already know uh, from the differentiation. So, this is the derivative of the vector function f. So, that means uh, that means that is or that this uh, that is d r d t or f dash t is parallel 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 to the tangent p t right of the curve r is equals to f t at the point p uh, 
where where t is the parameter parameter and therefore therefore capital r is equals to small r plus lambda times dr dt so capital r can be written as uh, capital r minus small r is equals to lambda times dr dt where so this equation represents the equation of the tangent line p t where lambda is any arbitrary constant, any arbitrary constant, arbitrary constant r is the position vector, is the position vector, position vector of p and capital R is the position vector of any point. on the tangent line so that means in this equation uh, we have shown that uh, dr dt is basically parallel to the tangent pt of the curve r is equals to ft so that means uh, the position vector of any point on the tangent plane or on the tangent line capital uh, ca is is denoted by capital r and this is basically small r plus lambda times del r dr dt so that means uh, we can be able to write the tan equation of the tangent line as uh, r minus capital r minus small r is equals to lambda times dr dt so this is this is basically saying that the tangent um, is uh, is parallel to dr dt and uh, this uh, capital and small r are basically no are basically nothing but this is the position vector of the point p and that's the position vector of any point on the tangent plane and dr dt is basically the derivative of the vector function r with respect to t and lambda is a constant. So, this is how we give the equation of a tangent line um, uh, at a point uh, p um, for the curve r is equals to ft. Um, so, today we will stop at here in the next class we will uh, work out few examples that how we calculate the tangent line although we saw in the previous uh, chapter on level surfaces how we calculate uh, how we calculate the tangent line. So, uh, perhaps we will do one more example and then we will introduce the concepts of normal and binormal of a vector function and then we will uh, try to derive the Serret-Ferenet formula. So, thank you for your attention and uh, I will look forward to your next class.